Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken, and this is the last lesson in our Chapter 7 about sampling distributions. We have two learning targets. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a difference between sample means, and if appropriate, use a normal distribution to calculate probabilities involving a difference between two means. And when we say if appropriate, that means we're going to be checking a condition for normality. So continuing our discussion of ACT scores, ACT scores at American Heritage High School are normally distributed with a mean of 26 and a standard deviation of 3. ACT scores at St. Andrews High School are skewed to the right with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of 5. We randomly select 25 students from American Heritage and 30 students from St. Andrews. Use the information given to describe the sampling distributions to the, of the average ACT scores for the two samples. The first item that we're going to check is shape. And we have a couple different ways that we can decide that a distribution or a sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. One of the ways is if the population is approximately normal. And in the setup, we hear that the ACT scores at American Heritage High School are normally distributed, so we know the shape of the sampling distribution will also be approximately normal. We know that the mean is an unbiased estimator of population mean, and we have two schools, so we're going to use a subscript of one for the first school, American Heritage, and we'll use a subscript of two for the second school, St. Andrews. In symbols, we would say that the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means for American Heritage is equal to the population mean for American Heritage, and in this case it's 26. Now when it comes to the standard deviation, we are again going to use a subscript of 1 for the first school and a subscript of 2 for the second school. So the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means for American Heritage is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that's going to give us 3 over the square root of 25, which is 0.6. Now let's take a look at St. Andrews. The sampling distribution of the mean for St. Andrews is also going to be approximately normal but for a different reason than the American Heritage, and it's because the sample size is 30. So we know that the sampling distribution is approximately normal because we learned the central limit theorem in our last lesson. And just as we talked about with American Heritage, the mean is an unbiased estimator, so we know that mu sub x bar for school number 2 is going to be equal to mu, which is 25. And we can calculate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for St. Andrews just as we did for American Heritage. So we're going to have sigma sub x bar 2 as equal to sigma sub 2 divided by the square root of the sample size for the second school. And this is going to give us 0.91. Suppose we took a sample of 25 students from American Heritage and a sample of 30 students from St. Andrews and found the difference in the sample means. Describe the sampling distribution of the difference in mean ACT scores. And the direction of the subtraction is American Heritage minus St. Andrews. We know that the mean of the sampling distribution of the difference in means will be the difference in the population means because mu sub x1 bar minus x2 bar is going to be equal to mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2. And this is what we mean when we say we have an unbiased estimator that the sampling distribution mean is equal to the difference in the population means. To find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution in the difference of, of the difference in mean scores, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem of statistics with the two standard deviations that we just found for each of the two sampling distributions, giving us a value of 1.093. Now, if we want to write this down formally in a formula, we would say 
that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the difference in mean ACT scores is equal to the square root of the sum of the variances of the two original sampling distributions. Now we know algebraically we can make that a little bit more simplified and this is the formula that you will see on your formula sheet. When it comes to the shape we know that the shape of the sampling distribution of the difference in mean ACT scores is going to be normal because both of the sampling distributions are approximately normal because we already checked the normal conditions for both of those distributions. Question number three asks us to calculate the probability that a random sample of 25 American Heritage students has a higher mean ACT score than the random sample of 30 St. Andrews students. And so what we're actually trying to find can be, writ can be written in probability notation like this. Now what we typically do is have both sample statistics on the same side of the inequality symbol. So we're gonna rewrite it like this, just using a tiny bit of algebraic manipulation. Now let's do a sketch and shade for the new normal distribution that we have found, which is the, representing the difference in mean ACT scores for the two schools. Remember that we always define the normal distribution with the mean and the standard deviation. And in order to shade, we need to pick a direction first. Well, let's, let me mark the mean. The mean is one. And the number that we want to be greater than is 0. 0 is to the left of 1. And the shading is going to be to the right because it says a higher mean ACT score. And the next step is, of course, to find the z-score. Now, formally, once again, what we're really finding is, when we find the z-score, the difference between the sample statistic and the population parameter in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have the standard deviation. So in this example, the z-score looks like 0 minus 1, because we're trying to figure out if it, the difference is greater than 0, divided by standard deviation, we already found it. And if we were to write this formally in kind of a generic way, which you will find on your formula sheet, it's going to look like this. Okay, so we find a z-score of negative 0.915, rounded to three decimal places. And using that, we can either go to table A or we can go to normal CDF in our calculators. If we use table A, remember number one, we're limited by decimal places in the z-score. And second of all, remember that it's a right-hand probability, so we're going to need to do 1 minus. When it comes to using normal CDF, remember that we have to indicate each of the parameters that we're inputting into the calculator. And we've got a lower boundary, which I never marked on here, was 0. Our upper boundary can be some giant number. The mean is 1, and the standard deviation, once again, is one point. 093. And that gives us a probability of 0.81988, or we could round to 8199, which is very similar to what we found with table A. Learning target number one about the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar which is the difference of sample means, the first thing that we need to do is be able to define the shape, center, and spread or variability of the sampling distribution of the difference in the sample means. And in order for us to determine the shape, we have to check both original sampling distributions. And we can determine that they are normal through one of two ways. Either the original popu parent population is an approximately normal distribution, or our central limit theorem applies with a sample size sufficiently large, meaning 30 or greater. The center of the sampling distribution of the sample means is going to be 
equal to mu1 minus mu2. Again, the, the difference in the population means. And the variability, we've already gone over this formula, but the variability is going to be measured by the standard deviation of the difference in the sample means. Uh, or the distributions of the sample means. And remember that when we are finding the standard deviation of two random variables that we have combined or two sampling distributions that we combined, variances add. So we're really working through variances. And let's go on to learning target number two now. Learning target number two is all about those normal calculations. So remember, you're always going to sketch and shade show the mean and the standard deviation as the definition of the normal distribution. And the shading helps us to remember if it's a left-hand probability or a right-hand probability, this is gonna to continue to be more meaningful in the next couple of chapters. Calculate the z-score. And then when you finish and you have everything that you need to be able to show your work, the last thing that you're going to do is either go to table A or go to normal CDF so that you can actually calculate the probability. Do not show that the z-score is equal to the probability because it's not. They are associated. The probability demonstrates the area under the curve and the z-score is the axis value. So there are two different things, but of course they are related. All right. This means that you're ready for your check your understanding questions. This series of three questions is going to take you through the defining the shape, center, and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the difference between the monthly cost of living expenses in California and in Florida. And then in part C, you're going to calculate the, prob the actual probability. Remember to do your sketch and shade. So the answers will be posted online if you need to check it out. Good luck, and I'll see you back in class.